now and again, someone will try to criticize my work as a pole dancer and say, you're just selling your body. And my response to them is, so are you if you're clocking in to someone else every day. What I do is not for the faint of heart. It is very hard. I wouldn't trade it for the world. My name is Candace Kane, and I am a professional pole dancer. All right, let's start with some head tilts from side to side. My origin is in pole classes. And then bring your chin to chest, and then look back at the sky. Started training two, three times a week, two hours a day, and I was addicted. Roll the shoulders backwards. I had been performing as a dancer for many, many moons. So once I became a pole dancer, it was only natural for me to want to perform that skill as well. Once I was seen in the clubs doing the pole dancing, a lot of people reached out for private events and birthday parties and, hey, I'm shooting a music video, would love to have you in there, you know, feature you dancing. I have a variety of talents that is not limited to pole dancing. I do handstands, burlesque, lira and lollipop, hanging trapeze, I do acro yoga, I can do pretty much anything is with my body. If you can tell me what to do with it, I'll try to do it. Being a freelance performer is sometimes a little bit difficult when it comes to balancing all the skills that I have. Sometimes I'm rushing off from one gig right into another, and then eventually there's someone else who reaches out, say, hey, Candace, I need a lesson. Are you available right now? And then eventually I make it home to go to sleep. I'm tired and I, I just hit the bed and I'm just out. All right, we're done stretching, so now it's time to get to the poles. Yeah! <laughs> one, two, three, lean out. So today I'll be teaching a semi-private with two of my prior students, and I'll be showing them some spins, a climbing pose, and a pose sitting on the pole. My students are different levels, so I'm going to be showing them the same trick, but different difficulty level. The beginner level of this, you're gonna turn your foot out, whichever one you prefer, and place it against the base of the pole. Knee goes up, head goes down, boom. Teaching is something I do take very seriously because people are essentially giving up their whole bodies and their safety to you. So it is very important for you to know exactly what you're doing and how to fix a scenario that can go awfully awry. And drop your head to the left. Drop, 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 drop. Good, good, good. I've been taking classes with Candace. This will be my second class, so about a month. What I like about Candace's teaching style is she makes you feel very comfortable stepping up and possibly getting to her level at one day. Like, out. Ah, yes. Woo, slippery, but we got it. My feet are That's good. Slippery. So when it comes to pole dancing, we have grip aids. If you ever feel like you're getting sweaty, you could always clean off your pole with rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And then you have grips. There's like uh, chalk that you can use. There's liquid tack. So depending on your body chemistry, you can find what type of grip aid works for you. Uh-huh. There is absolutely a big pole community, especially in Los Angeles. And what I like at least about the one I found is anybody and everybody, gender, race, body, whatever is welcome to just come try and have fun. <gasps> How's that look? <laughs> when I perform, I very much enjoy playing dress up. Okay, so this is my she shed. This is where most of my costumes are stored. I have all my props in here and everything that I need for any performance, whether it be pole, burlesque, all that jazz. I'm so proud of it because it took a while for it to get to where it's at. Here are some of my awards that I've won from the competitions I've competed in. These ones are actually all from Pole Sport Organization. And then this lovely crown here, this is from the Pole Olympics. These here are some of my pasties, some of which I've made myself, like these ones. And these are some of my most expensive babies, my prize possessions. Check this out. This is a showgirl costume. As you can see, there's so many different cutouts and the different types of jewels that are used. And so now I'm gonna show you my most expensive costume. So this 
This is a Catherine Delish robe. You have the Swarovski crystals, faux vegan silk. I have everything kind of tied up. That way I don't lose pieces because these, as you can see, are really expensive and I would cry to ever lose a piece. So total, we're looking at over a thousand dollars for just this costume alone. These are some of my pole heels. These ones up here are custom, so these are gonna run about 125 to 150. Fun fact, I've actually worn these while I was performing with Snoop Dogg. With, makes sense, right? I do have some more expensive pole heels. These ones were probably, I wanna say like 160 or so. So most of the heels that I've been showing you are like seven, eight inches. I even have some sixes in here, but these ones are the heavy duty ones because these are 10 inches. They actually come with a warning label not to dance in them, but I break the rules and I dance in them anytime I get the chance to. It's as big as my head. It takes a lot of focus and dedication. You have to not quit. Like, you really gotta go for it and give it your all. Otherwise, why even do it? So, when I start, I'll start on stage, and then the music will start. So I get here, I'll run a tech rehearsal, normally not in costume, just so I can preserve the costume. Tonight's performance is a combination. It's pole-esque. I'm doing burlesque because I am stripping my costume away as if I was a burlesque performer. However, I am also performing pole tricks, so that would qualify as a pole performance. But the thing is, with these shows, most of the time they don't provide a makeup artist. And as an individual performer, it is very beneficial to understand your own face and how to do it. I'm excited to try this, a little nervous, as high pigments usually can get a little messy. So wish me luck, guys. We'll see how this goes. Although I am stripping because I'm doing a burlesque performance and I am taking away items of clothing. Ironically enough, it's not a strip performance because I'm not getting naked. I am going down possibly to pasties. We'll see how I feel. I have pasties on underneath just in case. Oh yeah, I've had a stint in the strip club. I definitely did. It was a good time, you know, lots of craziness, but a lot of good times. It's not as negative as folks would lead it on to be. I stopped working in the strip clubs because I was getting paid to keep my clothes on <laughs> and I realized well, if I have the opportunity to make more money and I don't have to get naked in front of people, I'd rather just do that. Some of the physical challenges that come with pole dancing is injury and being overworked. And unfortunately, I've had a few injuries with pole dancing that I still deal with to this day. When I was working as an exotic dancer, there was a night that there was so much money on stage. When I went to go step to spin around the pole, my foot slipped one way, my knee went the other, and I tore my meniscus. And I was out of work for quite some time. I use cannabis to manage my pain. Now this is how I like to spend my pregame for my performance. It's like meditation. I also have a medical condition, endometriosis, which I use the marijuana to manage my pain because I have flare-ups. And my flare-ups include me having spouts of dizziness, nausea. I will have extreme pain in my abdomen. I either smoke it or I ingest it through edibles. Doing all that I do, it would be hard for someone to believe that I actually suffer from a chronic illness. I'm starting to get excited now. Now I feel like, okay, it's getting close to showtime. Oh, it's a fabulous time. I'm so happy you're all here. How are we feeling this evening? Oh my God, I can already tell you guys are gonna be good. We know you have many options for your pride celebration, but we're so glad you chose to fly with us. Burlesque is uh, originally created hundreds of years ago in America as a variety vaudeville show that showcased comedians, singers, musicians, dancers, the striptease artists. When people are part of Beauty of Burlesque, it's not just casting a dancer to do a dance in a show. 
It really is about us as a, as a tribe. We really are a team that cheers each other on, lifts each other up, and tries to make each other better. I'm always like ready to have fun. As soon as like the lights go down and the music starts, I'm like, this is the time to just forget everything. Like anything that I might be stressed about or like in real life, you can just have like eight minutes on stage where like everything stops and you're just in your own movie. <laughs> So me and Candace actually work together at another club in Hollywood, and she's a burlesque performer there. I think what makes Candace stand out as a performer is definitely her athleticism. I mean, I don't know anyone else who could like do an act in a handstand for most of the act, or you know, just like these crazy splits. And she's incredibly gorgeous and super creative too. I I've been watching her acts for a few years now, and every time she adds like a new element of surprise, whether it's like sparklers or like the poles like hanging from the ceiling. She's like already started at such a top-notch level and like how she's like continued to level up is really cool. Yeah, there we go. Jiggle, wiggle. Jiggle, jiggle. Jiggle, wiggle. Jiggle, wiggle. My nerves don't kick in for a performance until right before I go on stage. The thing that keeps me coming back to performing and dancing is my love of the craft and how I'm able to push my body to limits that I didn't think I could before. It's one of those things where you see yourself achieve a goal and then you want to achieve another goal. Pole dancing is hard. Whenever you see it performed on TV and shows, those people have put in plenty of hours to look the way they do to make it look as graceful and as sensual and as erotic and exotic, whatever the style may be. I feel that people who look down on pole dancers and strippers and the connection of the two often actually have shame around sex in general. So they're going to try to put that on the next person and say, how dare you do something that I'm not comfortable doing? People who try to make you feel bad for something, it's because that they want to be able to have that sense of freedom. And because they're not, they're going to attempt to bring you down because they can't get up to your level. Of course, everyone started going crazy when they saw the sparklers. And then I realized, I was like, wait, I'm facing the wrong way and I can't see their reaction. So I had to, in my headstand, turn around so I can show them like, hey, one, I could do a head spin kind of. And two, I wanted to see them cheering. <laughs> good. I feel really good. I think that I got all the tricks that I wanted to get out and then some, which was fun. I was like, oh, I have a little bit more time. I can milk this a little bit. All the costume pieces came off pretty easy. When it comes to performance, I never doubt my skills of being able to perform. I will never get on a stage and get choked up. I have too vast a vocabulary of knowledge for movement. I've been dancing for over 20 years. I've been doing pole for over 10 and I've been performing for over 15. What I enjoy most about expressing my sensual and sexy side through pole is the fact that I'm celebrating myself. It's a time for me to reclaim my own sexy and celebrate not only my body and its capability, but the mobility that it has. And I am sexy and it's okay, not for anyone else, but for my own self. I love pole dancing. I love the community that I've been brought into because of pole dancing. I love the people that I've been able to affect with my pole dancing. Had you told me when I was 
10, 11, 12, 13, even in college, that I'd be making my living as a pole dancer. I would have laughed so hard because I couldn't even see myself dancing on the pole for a living. Like, what? This right here, this is it. And this is where I'm going to be until I'm 60, 70, 80 years old. For as long as my body is able and capable of doing it, you will see me swinging on some poles.